here. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to go back to a series that, you know, you, you probably heard of Black History, but you, but there's some people in Black History you never really, those people were interested in this topic, but it's going to be some unique stories, men, black men and black women, that I never even knew about. But we're going to start with this first young woman, and she was. Born in the shadow of slavery, defied racism and segregation to become a champion of education and equality. Her courage in the face of injustice reshaped history. Born in 1848 to free black parents in New York City, Maricha grew up surrounded by the fight for freedom. Her family's home was a stop on the Underground Railroad, and they were deeply involved in the abolitionist movement. But her fight came early in life. As a teenager, Maricha was denied entry to a high school in Providence, Rhode Island, simply because of her race. Instead of giving up, she stood her ground, took the case to court, and won. That victory not only granted her admission, but paved the way for other black students. Maricha went on to dedicate 48 years to teaching, becoming a beacon of hope for her community. She also documented her life in one of the first memoirs by a black woman, ensuring her story of resilience and justice would inspire generations. Why isn't Maricha Raymond Lyons celebrated as a civil rights pioneer? Drop a comment if you believe her name deserves to shine. Follow and share to honor her courage and legacy. This is our... And there are other individuals as you see, I'm going to dedicate this to black people. That the history that they don't tell you. This is actual history. Some great black people you don't even know. Let's talk about this man. Mr. Young's wings was a fried meat, seasoned 
flour and was fried to perfection. No sauces, nothing. But to turn people on to the unfamiliar chicken wing, Young wants to make them truly unique. John Young started with this sauce called the mumbo sauce. It was a thinner, red, slightly spicy version of barbecue sauce, which is a sauce you might have found served at barbecue restaurants at that time. You can't say it's barbecue sauce, you can't say it's hot sauce, but it's, it's a sauce that makes you say, damn, this is good. But Young wants his mumbo sauce to have something special. A secret ingredient. He apparently changed the flavors with a little bit more of a tropical hit after a trip he had taken to Jamaica. Young also adds extra heat. Spicy enough to get people's attention. No one could replicate what John Young was doing. His sauce was secret. His sauce was his sauce. That sauce did something. It's like a uh, cake. A cake is not a cake you put that cherry on top. And salt did. did. But bold flavors are completely foreign to most Americans at the time. In mid-century America, the taste buds were very bland. It's a lot of heavy meatloafs, heavy kind of tasteless sauces, things that they thought were kind of hot French cuisine, but were really just kind of bland, tasteless things. But John Young believes his spicy flavors are the perfect accompaniment for fried chicken. He is very driven, determined. He thinks this is a brilliant idea. He's going to run with it. As Young releases his wings, he quickly finds few customers willing to try his creation. And sales are dismal. In good business sense, as far as in the community, and making a name for itself. Back in those days, us as people of color, we didn't have the resources to say, hey, I want to brand this. With no marketing beyond word of mouth, the business is barely scraping by. Food marketing is a huge piece of the puzzle because if you can make something delicious but you can't get anyone to eat it, then your business isn't going to grow. Until one day, his wings unexpectedly catch the attention of a local celebrity who plays on the city's newest sports team. The Buffalo Bills Stadium was about six blocks from where his restaurant stood. And the Buffalo Bills couldn't go Chris went there. And because he was famous, the people were lining up around the block. It was like he created a monster. At only five cents a piece, Young's wings are priced right for cash-strapped locals who want a snack while rooting for their favorite sports team. People would come in and buy 500 at a time, take them to the game, and they have distinct memories of buying them from John Young. Back in the 60s, going to the stadium, there's just a few lousy items for food, you know, nuts and so forth.
police riots and tear through Buffalo in the mid-1960s. Fearing for their lives, many African Americans flee the city, including John Young. Here he was with a thriving business, and the racial tension in Buffalo made him feel his family... To take his place, chicken wings are on the verge of falling back into obscurity. But just a mile down the road, another local restaurant is about to stake its claim to what will become known as the Buffalo Wing. In 1964, one mile from where John Young popularized chicken wings drenched in sauce, Another Buffalo family business is struggling to stay afloat amid the city's turbulent economic climate. Teresa and Frank Bellissimo were two Sicilian immigrants to America who, in 1935, started a restaurant called Anchor Bonds. run by Teresa Bellissimo is now drawn. African-American East Side, a recently unemployed radiator salesman has put everything he has into opening a small restaurant. John Young was born in a small town in rural Alabama as the fourth of 14 children, and like many people, traveled north with the Great Migration to Buffalo, where presumably he would find money and jobs. Even in the face of Buffalo's rising unemployment, Young sees an opportunity... Sorry about that. The pain over again. But yeah, that's... One of the stories that most people don't know about. Um, let's go to the next story. What? Have you ever heard of the black chemist who helped unlock the power of the atom? Lloyd Quarterman was one of the hidden minds behind the Manhattan Project, changing history in ways most people never realize. Born in 1918, Quarterman broke barriers during an era of segregation to work on one of the most secretive and significant projects in history. As one of only six black scientists on the Manhattan Project, he played a critical role in isolating uranium isotopes, an essential process for creating nuclear energy. His work was vital to the development of the atomic bomb, a turning point in World War II. But Quarterman's contributions didn't stop there. After the war, he turned his focus to clean energy and nuclear research, paving the way for advancements that still impact us today. His brilliance defied the odds, shining through an era that often tried to keep black scientists out of the spotlight. Why isn't Lloyd Quarterman's name celebrated alongside other scientific pioneers? Drop a comment if you believe his legacy deserves more recognition. Follow and share to honor this brilliant mind.
They said, well, why, James? There's All people. of the burning and bombing that was done to us in the houses, nobody never said too much about that, and nothing was done. But let something be burned, you know, by a black man, and then, my God, you know. You see, the flag is, is drenched with our blood. as a man, as we know, this country was built on the black backs of black people across this country. And if we don't have it, you ain't gonna have it either, cause we gonna tear it up. That's what they say. And people ought to understand that. I, I don't see why they don't understand it. They know what they've done to us. All across this country, they know what they've done to us. We don't own anything. There is, Trevor Noah said it so beautifully last night. There's a social contract that we all have. That We played your game and built your wealth. You broke the contract when we built our wealth again on our own by our bootstraps in Tulsa and you dropped bombs on us. When we built it in Rosewood and you came in and you slaughtered us. You broke the contract, so fuck your target. Fuck your Hall of Fame. As far as I'm concerned, they could burn this bitch to the ground. And it still wouldn't be enough. And they are lucky that what black people are looking for is equality and not revenge. All of the burning... Wow. If you're black, stop scrolling. Let me explain something to you. Do not go to any of these areas if you are black. Now, if you're looking at this map right now, you see all of these red dots. And what's crazier is that the darker the dot, the more serious the situation. Now, these cities in the U.S. are off limits to us. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by when I say they're off limits. And what's crazy is that some of these communities are still the same to this day. These red dots are places in each state that are considered sundown towns. Now, if you've never heard of sundown towns before, let me explain to you what that is. Sundown towns are communities in the U.S. to any of these areas if you are black. Now, if you're looking at the... That's the reason why. That's what she was upset about. But there's more something more about black people you need to know.
Statue of Liberty was a black woman called But you dig it. You probably won't hear about this in this place. Did you know there's a museum in D.C. that holds over 40,000 artifacts and tells 400 years of history? The National Museum of African American History and Culture, part of the Smithsonian, is one of the most powerful landmarks in Washington, D.C. I've been there. Opened in 2016, it's not just a museum. It's a journey through the struggles, triumphs, and culture of African Americans. The building itself is a masterpiece. history of slavery, including actual shackles used on enslaved people. As you ascend, the exhibits shift to tell stories of the civil rights movement, music, art, and the Tuskegee Airmen's PT-13 Stearman, honoring the first African-American military pilots. Did you know there's a museum in D.C. that holds over 40,000... Yep. And there's more. If you love history, you need to hear about Junius G. Groves, the potato king of the world. Born into slavery in 1859, Groves in 1879. Starting as a humble farmhand, his dedication earned him nine acres to farm. By 1884, he and his wife Matilda had saved enough to buy 80 acres near Edwardsville, Kansas. Their success multiplied, and by 1888, they owned a staggering 2,000 acres and lived in a 22-room mansion. At his peak, Groves harvested a record 721,000. to empire, Grove's story is a testament to what can be achieved with determination and support. If you love history, you need to hear about Junius G. Groves, the potato king of the world. Born into slavery in 1850. inventors have long been behind some of the most groundbreaking innovations, often without receiving the recognition they deserve. Their creativity and resilience have brought us many institutions continue to shape our world. First up is Granville T. Woods, known as the Black Edison, who took thrills to new heights by inventing the roller coaster. In 1884, Woods patented his Figure 8 amusement ride, laying the foundation for the modern roller coaster. His design brought joy and excitement to amusement parks and set the stage for the thrill rides we enjoy today. Next, we have Thomas J. Martin, an innovator who prioritized safety by patenting an early version of the fire extinguisher in 1872. His design focused on a pressurized system for extinguishing fires, making it easier to control small fires in homes and buildings. Martin's invention was a precursor to the modern fire extinguisher. 
complex engineering challenges. His work laid the groundwork for future advancements in lighter-than-air crafts, impacting the fields of aviation and transportation. These inventors not only solved problems of their time, but also created innovations that continue to enhance our everyday lives. From amusement park thrills to life-saving fire safety equipment and advancements in air travel, the legacies of Granville T. Woods, Thomas J. Martin, and John P. Parker remind us of the power of innovation. By sharing their stories, we honor these trailblazing inventors and inspire future generations to dream. Oh. So, you thought... You thought that was something? 32 Richard B. Spikes received a patent for an automatic car gear shift. Big companies welcomed his inventions. His patent number was 1889814. By the time he created the automatic safety brake in 1962, Spikes was losing his vision. To complete the device, he first created a drafting machine for blind designers. The machine would soon be used in almost every school bus nationwide. These are other inventions by Richard B. Spikes. 1. Railroad Semaphore. 1906. 2. Self-locking rack for billiard cues. 1910. 3. Beer keg tap. 1910. 4. Automatic car washer. 1913. 5. Automobile directional signals. 1913. 6. Continuous contact trolley pole. 1919. 7. Combination milk bottle opener and cover. 1926. 8. Method and apparatus for They trouble. Stay away from the black. They're not intelligent. Stay away from the black people. Black Project 2025, first beat is happening tonight. If you don't know what's going on, check the search bar. Join. And let's make history, folks. Black Project 2025, first beat is happening tonight. If you don't know what's going on. I'm done with marching. We're not marching anymore. The only thing that moves this society is racism and greed. Do not give your hard-earned money back to the people that want you in chains. Black people, we need to boycott. We need to disengage from Black Friday. Hear me again. We need to boycott Black Friday.
society before only to have it burned down and and uh, torn apart by racist white people. Black Wall Street was thrown out there. Yes, we built societies in the past, beautiful communities, but what we did not do is protect those societies we built. We did not maintain the protection of what we built and that is what needs to change. We're not going to talk about how we're going to accurately protect what we build online. We need to get out of the whole realm of telling our whole plan on the internet. We need to go back to the days where we grouped up and spoke in real life, in person. And that's going to take the communities that we come from, that's going to take the churches opening their doors for meetings. Wherever we can group up and meet in person and specifically talk about our strategies to protect our community. Our black schools on the internet. We need to do that in person. So we will organize and group up. If you want to group up, group up for that. Stop marching. Group up to talk strategy. Group up in real life to talk strategy. Group up in real life to talk about how we're going to attack all of the problems in our community. We have to get serious and we have to get consistent. So to recap, there is no Black Friday. We're out. The only Black Friday I want to see people talking about is the fact that we're going to make it a point to go out and find black businesses on Black Friday to contribute to. Walmart, you're done. We boycott you. Chick-fil-A. history in Fayetteville with them. They have built the first black-owned shopping center. Chelsea's Baron Peterson's live along New Hope Road and Barrett, they found out they were the first at the groundbreaking. Yeah, they heard it from the mayor and now they hope to inspire others to go big as well. So here's the new shopping center just opened. Felicia and Winchell Ellibert say if they can do it, you can do it. Felicia Ellibert and her husband Winchell thought it might be a big deal. But not this big. It really didn't hit me until the day of ribbon cutting. Last week, for the new Kingdom Corner Shopping Center in Fayetteville, the city's very first black-owned shopping center. Seven new businesses, four of them open, all of them leased along New Hope Road. A project that required quite a bit of courage and a never-give-up mindset. The couple closed on the four-acre property. That's just all I can say. Uh, we were chosen for this project. The Yellow Birds have a lot of business experience. They've owned a smoothie franchise for years, built a new one here at the shopping center, where they also own a med spa called Cleansing Waters. The schedule's actually pretty tight today. But they never thought they'd be developers. They say it includes a new set of responsibilities. They're the first in the local black community to do this. They hope the first of many. We've been getting phone calls, text messages, stop bys, just to say what an inspiration we are to, you know, to the community. So now I think it's it's really hitting us on, like, making history and really what that means. And not just what it means to us, but what it means to our community. And the rest of the stores in this shopping center will be open by next spring. More than it's an African American. You have your, your Korean town, you have your different areas up in parts of the country that are Arab um, and Muslim businesses, they do the same thing. You have the, the Asians that do the same thing, Korean town, Chinatown, a little, little, Viet, little Vietnamese, they, what they say, different parts of this country, and other people. 
so it didn't be done. Well, I want to show you something. What else did you didn't know about black, black history? Tell you about this man. Have you heard of John P. Parker, the former enslaved man who risked everything to about that part do they also something simple as this yo did you know that the happy birthday song wouldn't exist if it wasn't for black singers in Louisville Kentucky yeah happy birthday to you wouldn't exist without us first off I gotta acknowledge I'm giving you this fact on my birthday alright back to the video this story begins with Mildred and Patty Hill of Louisville, Kentucky in the mid-1800s. These street cries were done in a blues scale, which led her to predict in the late 1800s that blues and jazz would become America's most popular genre of music, and she was right. She basically said that if you were to write about the history of music in Kentucky, that a large portion would have to focus on African Americans' music. And in fact, she also felt that the preservation of it should be prioritized because the old singers were starting to die out. Now these street cries that Mildred was enamored with were simple, beautiful, and easy to understand. And because they both wanted to begin to incorporate and teach music to the young children they taught, they devised a plan to create a song similar to the melodies and style format that they came across from these black singers. And the song they created, which was inspired by those black musicians, was Good Morning By the 1920s, the Hill sisters had discovered while at a party that that same melody was used to sing a song called Happy Birthday to You. And of course, they weren't receiving any credit for essentially creating the foundation of that song with the melody. And neither did the black singers that they borrowed it from. So naturally, they sued in a long legal battle that wouldn't be resolved until 2016 would begin. So the next time you sing the most famous song in the English language, remember that it wouldn't exist without these black singers in Louisville, Kentucky, who didn't have access to a studio or copyright office. And it's crazy because we grew up calling the Stevie Wonder's version the black version, which he created for Dr. King's birthday and for his holiday.
just absolutely amazing. us that are so talented and we were to work together with our own black agenda for 2025 i'm talking opening up black owned grocery stores in certain cities black owned banks so that way we can actually get our home loans and do what we need to do our own doctor's offices our own law practices and we really were to just congregate and push towards our goals and our outcomes right and so this is how i envision it going we can all get into this group we can all donate what we have to donate on a monthly basis, and then basically we can have a CEO, we can have a CMO, and we can have a CFO that's in charge of leading the groups with the initiatives, right? We could have bi-weekly, monthly calls in regards to where we stand with our goals. So, okay, guys, we want a black-owned grocery store in Los Angeles built and developed, um, you know, August 2025. wears off of purchasing from these large corporations. I'm talking black owned coffee brands, clothing, everything you guys can think of, toiletries, like down to everything, like body washes, everything we use and consume on a daily basis. It is no longer purchased from these large corporations. It is purchased from one another. And I think that we can create so much wealth amongst ourselves just by strictly swearing off of supporting large corporations and only supporting one another and also congregating to create our own agenda. Now, I know that there have been people who have tried to do this before in the past, and I know that we struggle as a community to trust one another. I don't really care about all that right now. I just personally feel like if we, would, if we aren't able to put our pride aside and get it done, I feel like it could be one of the most impactful things done in black history. Shout out to the young lady for, for the vision and it's already being done by her people getting together. Getting together. But before I leave, give you some inspired look at. Huge a uh, cigar shaped ship appears over the airport base. These cigars uh shaped ships were over a mile. One of them landed on the uh, uh, airport landing strip area. The back of this craft opened up and several hundred young men with huge heavy weapons came out of two sides of the ship and formed a uh, protection line around the ship. that were aboard this ship and this particular race that landed those ships and that are seen in these, these huge uh, cigar-shaped ships, they were uh, a black race. They look like african American. They were about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, uh, huge weapons. And if you've ever seen a, 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 a race of people that were conquerors, that had never been conquered, they've got this look about them Americans, that's exactly what these uh, uh, extraterrestrials had, and they informed these people at the American, at, at this American Air Force Base, that not only were they from a militaristic society, but they had controlled a large portion of the galaxy that we live in. I don't know if that's true or not, but 
Um, yeah, and I'm I'm gonna put in my before I, in this video to give some idea of this is where you started. This was the. The picture of the people so they make sure that they are the people make sure they ain't putting on no black they trying to be like black folks you don't want someone like Mindy what's that one young woman um, who was on the office and her brother um, portray herself as a black man you don't want somebody portraying somebody else a black woman or a black man an another thing too I want to add on to um, get some lawyers because they're gonna try to find some divining law to try and say, well, if you do something, um, you have to rename it a project even though it's particularly for black, but just in case they'll use some, well, that's, you, you're causing division. So you don't want to get that. So this is where you get the attorneys and maybe rebrand and rename it, even though it's black people. For example, you can call it the Judy children or something like that. You know what I mean? And that way and say, wait a minute, this is not particularly pointing out this race. Because technically, somebody from these other nationalities are going to try to pull something like that. Just like the one young black woman that tried to have something funded for black women, black entrepreneur business, and some Bernstein bear came along and disrupted it, saying that that was discriminatory. So, you need some know about the cop hey this should encourage the Hispanic community to do the same thing I wouldn't blame them they call it a Mexico they had nothing but Mexican Americans and or Puerto Ricans can encourage your own to do your own. Have everybody do they can speak their native tongue and speak English. So if so they you feel comfortable doing among your own. That's what they do. But this is what I say this to black folks. This is what these other nationalities do around your city. So therefore you have to formulate what you what you do. And you have to have com commerce, have a black trucking company, have a black, you know, electrical company, a black everything. And just condense and hire more. Because when Latinos go out and they got they, 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 they speak English and Spanish. They have con contract companies. They they I met few. They have their own. This is this is just trucking companies. Latinos own them. You have some Middle Eastern guys that send into trans logistics too, and it be run by some Iranians or some descent or pa Palestinian Lebanese descent, and this is what they do. And they you know. They got some few people that look, but they probably, but they're Arab Americans. They own their own business. So anybody, but you know when it comes to us, they got to, what I'm playing, they always got to make a spec specifically. So, and then you got to weed out the haters. That they, they come with the good intention and come with the common vision. Because that's the very important thing too. And if you and this is what Dr. Claude Anderson was saying, this is how great you are. This is how great you could become. And see, it's gonna take something like the Trump administration and even all these white supremacists, whatever, doing what they do, 
this had to push you to bring the black men and black women together that you, because they do, and hopefully some African and Caribbean people can ally with us and be on cold with this. But we, we want, but our make purpose in making this video is to break that stereotype. And then you want it, and your little black girl, your little black boy don't see it until show them this video so they can see themselves as the, the adults become before them. That's what this video is about. Because other people get to see who they are going to become, like their uncles, their fathers, their aunts. If it was trying to tell you, like Dr. Claude Anderson, when you bring, like with the, with the plaza, you do stuff like that. Because these other nationalities are doing, I've seen it here in Ohio. I've seen it with some East Asians. They have, I've seen an East Asian have a grocery store. They have a restaurant, two restaurants right alongside each other, and another business. All East Asians, outside of Columbus. On, on, on the out on further what they call out in Hilliard, the Muslim community, some Arabs, mixed in with some Arabs and others, have their own dairy farm. I seen it on a channel here. It was in Arabic. You have you have um, different people, and this is what motivates you. Whatever city you live in, I'm pretty sure it's in a state city that you live live in. You don't know about this until one day you have to trip up on a channel. Or you have to you go on delivery, you find out the whole, and you go, and I can tell. You didn't do anything. You didn't invent nothing. You don't have the education. That this video busts it down. So when you do this, go go and check out TikTok videos and and some YouTube to that cover these channels. And you stick it right back in their face. I don't care if they come from the continent of Africa. You show them. Because you are the inventors and creators. And you would continue to get fishers, shakers, and movers that continue to do. If we would go over to Africa, give us the best, watch what America would do. And it's going to inspire others to do the same thing. See what they say then. All right, then, guys. Hope you like this video. Like and subscribe. Till next time. Take care. And encourage your generations of young black boys and young black girls. They can be it. And black men, black women, you're still still time. What is your gift? Apply it. And remember, there you have it. Take care. We're going to see you on the next video.